Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. As you may know, I am a bit of a rail nerd, also a monorail nerd. But when it comes to two rails, I've had a variety of crazy vehicles that have ridden abandoned railroad tracks. For a while I had a really heavy antique rail bike or velocipede thing, and then I tried making one with plastic wheels. That didn't work very well. I've also had various iterations of my electric rail go-kart thing, and in fact I still have that, and it still pretty much works. Although I'd really like the thing to go faster, and my experiments in that direction with different motors really haven't gotten very far. Now I have a few more parts and pieces that could become railroad vehicles, including these legit high rail wheels, and this old electric scooter from an auction that I could try to put onto tracks. But what I think I want to work on today is more of a traditional rail bike design. This is something a little more similar to the rail bike that my friend Carl built, which you've seen in some prior videos. And it gives me an excuse to reuse my weird homemade child's bike with an engine on it that I got at another auction. We've previously tried to make this an amphibious vehicle. That didn't work very well. And this thing's kind of silly as just a bike. So we're going to make it even more silly by putting railroad attachments on it. We're going to need a guide or trolley of some sort to keep the front wheel centered on the railroad track. We're also going to need an outrigger to balance on the other track, and then we might have some other parts and pieces of it. Well, let's get started. Alright, I think this thing is about ready for a test run. Should be basically done, there's a few more little tweaks, and then I'm sure I'll find some problems with it once I get it out on the railroad. That always happens. I've set it up so this outrigger is detachable with these wing nuts on each end, and then it's just some uh, carabiners here holding this tensioning cable, and that keeps my outrigger foot from pushing out because this piece of aluminum isn't quite as big as it should be, but I'm using scraps that I had, so it's all free anyway. I'm a little concerned that my tensioning cable is going to catch on brush in between the tracks, so we might have to do something a little different with that. The tracks in the park near my house don't have too much brush in the center, so that won't be an immediate problem, but we'll get to that later. And then I'm not 100% sure if I want to stick with this little caster system on the outrigger, or if I want a beefier wheel out here. We'll have to see how that performs. I can also adjust the tension on the outrigger with this turnbuckle. As with a lot of my projects, it's a little rough. It's all made out of scrap. Basically free, except I did pay some money for the bike in an auction, but I've already used the bike for a couple other projects, so I think I'm getting my money's worth out of this thing. 
Well, I'd really like to test the rail bike, but it is still winter, and I can only find about 18 inches of railroad track under the ice here. And this is really solid, thick stuff, so I can't just brush it away. We're going to have to wait for a little more melt to happen before we can play with this. Another problem with it being winter is all of my rubber and plastic has gotten brittle, so I actually snapped the fuel line off here. I'm going to have to wait till it warms up a little bit and try to get that back on there. snow has finally melted from the abandoned railroad, but as usual there's a bunch of stuff growing up through the tracks, so we've got to do a little landscaping before we can test this. Now there's always some subset of my comment section that says that no railroad is ever really abandoned and I'm definitely going to get run over by a train by going on these tracks. Well, this is in a public park. As you can see it's right next to the walking path. And this is one end of the track. And the other end is basically down there by that blue sign. So these tracks don't go anywhere. They're definitely not used anymore. Don't try this at home, though. Alright, this thing is working okay so far. It's got a few little issues. If the track is wet, then the tires want to slip. So that's not great. Um, also, this front guide is not very tolerant of ice and snow or bushes, so it gets jammed up a little more on these uh, old abandoned tracks. And then it, it does have the tendency to tip over. Uh, there's not much weight on that outrigger, so if I lean too far to the right, it just tips over. And then if it does tip, the front wheel pops off the track. So it's still not very well guided by this front guide. I might have to rebuild that, maybe move the guide wheels closer to the driving wheel or farther away. We'll have to experiment with that, see what's better. Um, maybe instead of this rear guide, which probably isn't 100% necessary, maybe we could put the rear guide onto the front wheel so that front wheel is held more parallel to the track. Theoretically, if the front wheel guide is working, then we don't need this rear wheel guide at all, but we're just doing some experiments at this point. Anyway, I think maybe it's time to try the motor. Alright, so this thing definitely works, and it is a lot faster than my earlier railroad contraption. In fact, it's kind of scarily fast. I'm probably only going 5 or 10 miles an hour here, but if that front guide comes off, it's just going to be like flying metal everywhere, and I'm probably going to go end over end. So, I think I might want to redesign that just a little bit. But for now, everything else is working. The engine's working, the bike's working, my guide's proof of concept is mostly working, my little caster rollers are working. So, I want to say this is a success. Um, I definitely want to take this out on some longer railroads, but we might have to do a few tweaks here and there before we do that. So I'm going to wrap up this video. 
thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you see the further adventures of the stupid rail bike, and we'll see you next time. And with the outrigger removed, it works just fine as a regular bike.